Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take a look mathematically at what electromagnetic radiation is. So here from the previous video, we realized when we have a dipole antenna and it starts uh, emitting electromagnetic radiation by flipping the polarity of the charges on the antenna back and forth, back and forth, which sets up electric field oscillations and magnetic field oscillations, which then spread outward. You can see that to an observer far away, the electromagnetic uh, fields that are oscillating back and forth will appear like a plane wave because as they spread out the curvature will diminish to the point where it pretty well will look like a plane wave and what we've done here is mathematically try to represent that as a plane wave approaching an observer at the distance so what we can say then is at the very moment when the electric field oscillations are upward like this the magnetic field oscillations will be going sideways this way and the direction of the wave will be traveling this way using your right hand you can simply take your fingers point them in the direction of the electric field, curl your fingers in the direction of the B field, and your thumb will point in the direction of the motion of the electromagnetic radiation. So, as the electric field goes up, B field goes this way, as the electric field goes down, B field will go in the opposite direction, kind of what you see in here, where the electric field is down, B field is in that direction, the electric field is up, B field is out of the board, so you can see that is in line with what we have over here. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the Maxwell's equations, we're going to take Gauss's law, Gauss's law for magnetism, Ampere's law, and Faraday's law to describe what actually goes on inside these electromagnetic field oscillations. And by doing that, we'll be able to come up with equations that describe the motion and the existence of these electromagnetic waves. Maxwell had a very good understanding of this and he was able to compare those two and actually from that, he was able to determine the speed of light using these these equations right here, a tremendous accomplishment. So quickly reviewing here is that Gauss's law says that if we draw a Gaussian surface around the wave like this, we can say that the product of the electric field strength along the surface multiplied times the area of the surface will always equal to the Q inside, the charge inside, divided by epsilon sub naught. Of course, Maxwell realized that when we have electromagnetic radiation, there is no charges inside, and so therefore you would expect this to be zero. Secondly, Gauss's law for magnetism, which says there are no such thing as monopoles. Again, the same thing is if we completely encircle a section of this electromagnetic radiation by a Gaussian surface and we integrate the magnetic field strength along the surface times the area of the surface, we expect that also to equal zero because we don't expect it to be any monopoles, any sources, singular sources of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, or I should say magnetic field oscillations. The magnetic field only exists because there's changes to the electric field inside, not because there's some monopole, monopole magnetic uh, field source inside that surface. Thirdly, we can look at Ampere's law. Ampere's law says that if we integrate the strength of the magnetic field around a loop, that should always equal the current inside that loop. Now you can see there's not going to be any current inside the loop, but they also realize that it can also be equal to the change in the electric field flux per unit time times some constant. This, of course, is the permeability and the permittivity of free space. Permeability and permittivity of free space right there. And so even though this is going to be zero because there's no current enclosed, there's going to be changes in the flux of the electric field which will cause the kinetic field to exist. So there we already saw the relationship between whenever there are changes to the flux of the electric field, there will be the existence of a magnetic field. And so this equation, Ampere's law, bears that out. And finally, Faraday's law says that if we do a, a loop integral, uh, and then we multiply the electric field along that loop times the direction and the distance of that loop, we should, that should always equal to the change in the magnetic flux as a unit of time. So you can see that if there's an existence of an electric field and we can integrate around the loop, that integral should equal the change in the flux of magnetic field as a function of time. Another way of looking at that is that this is equal to the EMF induced. It sets up a voltage, which then the voltage induced should equal the change in the magnetic flux over time. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually apply these equations, these Maxwell's equations, to an, an emerging and a moving electromagnetic wave and from that we should be able to describe equations that determine the exact what is exactly going on inside this wave so that's what we're going to do we're going to take Maxwell's equations apply it to this situation and come up with equations that describe what actually happens when you have electromagnetic radiation in mathematical terms so stay tuned if you're still interested and we'll show you how to do that